Hello everybody, uh, I'm back after a bit of a hiatus, I've just been kind of busy lately, but today I've got uh, Commando Man, and um, he's the other guy, Blade Man, is uh, coming up after Commando Man, um, and yeah, my buddy wanted me to talk about uh, Game Crush on here, which if you haven't heard of it, it's uh, basically a service where you, once you sign up for it, um, you give them your gamer tag or whatever, and then they get girls to uh, play video games with you and talk dirty to you while they play video games with you. Um, and you know, there's all these stories about how it's sexist and all that, and all these people are complaining about it. And that's, yeah, I guess that's true at all, but <laughs> the thing is, it's eight ninety five a minute, or no, eight ninety five for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and I mean, I'm not really so concerned about the sexist thing because we've had like phone sex lines and things like that for years and you know it was bound to just transfer over to another medium but 895 for 10 minutes for something that I do probably six hours a day like I want to know how I can get in on some of that money you know like I want to slice that pie too um because yeah that's that's an awesome deal <laughs> I don't know like how much of that 895 uh for 10 minutes actually goes to uh the person doing it and how much goes to the game crush company or whatever but even if you get like half that amount of money I I think it'd be worth it to put up with a little bit of like indirect sexual exploitation basically to just listen to somebody like uh, embarrass themselves for a little while. I mean, you could probably just troll them while you were doing it, and then if you ever decided to quit or something, just you'd have this nice pile of videos to upload to the internet for other people's amusement, because I bet it would be hilarious the kind of people that actually use a service like that. And speaking of which, like, what would you even get for eight ninety five if you did decide to use it, you know? Like for eight ninety five they better not just be able to talk dirty, but they better also be able to play like fucking Fatality or Clan Optic or some shit, you know? Like for eight ninety five, if I'm paying that to have you on my team, I expect you to be good. Like, um I mean probably I I, I mean let's say a good player gets one kill a minute or one kill every thirty seconds. So eight ninety five, you're paying like a dollar a kill probably if they're good, <laughs> and you're playing like a first person shooter. Um, yeah, I'd I'd expect them to be real damn good at the game. How do you know their skill levels and stuff? Uh, like apparently there's a whole separate section if you want to just play flash games with them. But uh, who would want to take advantage of that? <laughs> I'm not gonna pay somebody like eight ninety five to play Peggle or Cannibal, you know? Like you don't pay that to play those games for one minute or an hour, or you don't pay anything for those games. So why would you pay somebody to play with them with you? Um, at least make it worth your while. Um, but speaking of uh, whores who are paid too much to talk. Um, there's an article in Esquire, and it's called In Defense of Ann Coulter, and it's like, I, like, I couldn't care less about Ann Coulter, I didn't even really know who she was before, like, a week ago, and then when I found out, I didn't really care either, but it's, it's mostly this article that I'm pissed off at, and it's written by a guy named Mark Warren, and um, it's just it's just this one big ass long thing about him going on about what a shitty country Canada is before their lack of freedom of speech and stuff. Um, and he's basing this all on this thing that happened recently at a university, which is it's just across town for me actually. It's right at Ottawa U. Um, and she was supposed to give a speech or something, and it ended up getting canceled. And she said that there were death threats and stuff. And this guy goes on talking about how, oh yeah, you can't just invite somebody to your country to speak and then not let them speak. And like, he's uh, just talking about how Canada is such a terrible country for doing that. But really, like, that's not what happened at all. And the only, like, the only reason that <laughs> um, Ann Coulter's getting any fame from this is because of his terrible reporting. Um, I wasn't actually at the presentation myself, but I've got all, I know a few people who go to that university, 
and uh, I know a few people who went, right? Both like to hear her speak and to hear her pro or, or to protest her being there and all this stuff. And what happened was there was a Facebook group beforehand of people who wanted to move it to another venue um, because they didn't want their school being associated with Ann Coulter, right? The event ended up being uh, like so popular among the students that um, the the staff, like the security staff at the university recommended that she go to another venue, okay? And then um, what happened was uh, like af after a while somebody pulled a fire alarm and stuff and it was taking them forever to get everybody in and then the police told her like we should switch to another venue it might not be safe in here like there could be a fire hazard or something um and all this stuff and, and told her to go to another venue and then she just outright canceled it right and said the next day that there were death threats and stuff which ended up being these this stupid shit somebody posted on facebook about wanting to cover her with molasses and putting her in a room with a wolverine or something um <laughs> and yeah this guy just goes off and blames canada on this but like the the real story is nothing like the way ann coulter tells it like none of my friends even thought it was a big deal until the next day when all of a sudden all these accusations are being made against like uh, the university here and you know by this douchebag our whole country <laughs> which because we're uh, apparently so wrong to silence Ann Coulter because um, she like okay the the university wrote her a letter that she got all offended by but the letter basically told her like we or the freedom of speech laws in Canada are a bit different you know we have free speech but then we also have hateful speech and you know you can't you can't do the hateful speech thing like you can and sort of get away with in the states right um, and he basically just advised her, like, you might want to overlook, or you might want to, like, look over those laws so you don't get yourself arrested. And she flipped out at this and, like, went ahead, leaked that whole email on her blog or whatever, and then, uh, went off on us for being such this unfree country and shit. This dude was just giving her some good advice. Like, it's not his fault that she can get arrested in her country for doing stupid shit, like, that she can sort of get away with in her own country. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I don't know, the whole thing is just really fucked up, and then, uh, this dude who, I guess, writes for Esquire, the Mark Warren guy, um, was that his name? Hold on, I'll look it up. Yeah, Mark Warren, um, he just went off on this big, long rant and only made it worse, and, uh, <laughs> it's not a word of what he said in that whole article was true, um, and he just sort of made an ass of himself, so I, I just wanted to clear that up for everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll post a link to, I, I've probably already posted a link to that article, and I'll post a link now to the one where it's like, it's from the CDC, and it's closer to what I was told happened from my friends who were actually there. Um, so... I'll, uh, I'll put that up here. Not to mention the fact that I think a lot of Americans would probably pat Canada on the back for shutting up Ann Coulter, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyways, um, I'll, I'll keep trying to post these more regularly. I've actually, uh, the reason that I've stopped lately is because last week I acquired four new games, and then I'm trying to get through them all now on top of this awesome double XP weekend for Modern Warfare 2 because those new maps came out and they're they're sweet I actually really like them especially that one with the pool I think it's called bailout that's the, yeah they're uh, I think they're a lot better than the maps that were included um, and uh, I've been playing a, a lot of Resonance of Fate uh, because the more I play it the more I like it when I first bought it it was like uh, it took me a while to get into, but that's because it's really, really, really hard uh, and complicated. But once you have it, it's like every battle is like just so satisfying to get through. Um, oh, and Espeluga 2, or Espeluda 2 finally arrived in the mail. Um, so I've got that to go with my Mushihima Sama Futari now. And I really want to post some videos from those games, even though, even though I'm not the best at them. I think I could probably pull off something to put in a video uh, that might be pretty cool. And uh, I guess the other one was Just Cause 2, which uh, it's good. Um, 
I don't think I've been playing it as much as most people. I can't play it in lo for long periods of time, otherwise I just sort of get caught up doing the same things over and over again, uh, like just repeating the same methods of destruction. But if I put it down for a while and pick it up again, I, I just love it all over again. And especially when you're playing with friends and you're just passing the controller, that's that's really the best way to do it because you know you're always <laughs> you're always switching up your tactics and doing new things when you're doing that. So um, I guess I'm uh, I'm at the end of the video. So uh, we're getting pretty close to the Wily stages here. Uh, I guess we got five or six levels left uh, between them all. Um, and those will be coming up soon, so have a good one. Talk to you later. Goodbye.